Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Food for Thought. It's um, the 23rd of April, 2021. My name is Pastor Clint Lang with Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. Glad that you could join me for today's devotions. Again, we're exploring some wonderful parables of Jesus, and today we're going to be looking at the parable of the lost coin as recorded in Luke chapter 15, verses 8 to 10. So the, the backdrop for this story was Jesus just expressing um, to the people that he was teaching just the value that he holds in one soul. So he goes on to tell the story. He says, uh, suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Does she not light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, and I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Now, when we look at this particular parable, we see there is a passage of time and, and maybe the, the impact of this story doesn't hit us in the same way as it may have in the first century, but I think it's good for us to look at it in the context of where it is. In today's day and age, I mean, coins have very little value in comparison with our daily income. And if a lady lost a coin, she probably wouldn't get all carried away about it and you know, basically lock down her life and, and search for the little coin, um, you know, in comparison with today's income. You know, most of us wouldn't get ex excited about losing a, a dime or a nickel or even a quarter or a toonie. I mean, we would, might, it hurts a little bit more to lose a toonie, but, um, you know, when it costs seven bucks for a hamburger nowadays and, you know, $120 to fill up our, our uh, vehicle's gas tank, I mean, most of us don't really get all that excited about losing uh, a, a small coin, but I think if we compare the way that it was back then with now, I mean, it's, it's kind of like if we would imagine that the coin that was lost was made out of solid gold and, and worth a thousand dollars. Now that's, that's the sort of scenario that we got. I mean, if you lost a coin, a gold coin in your house, in a crack somewhere or it went into the couch or whatever and it was worth a thousand dollars that's the kind of coin that you would look into the night particularly if you had mortgage payments to pay or th that was a real um, hit to you so this is the kind of coin that the woman in this parable has lost and when she loses it we see that she lights a lamp and she looks for it into the night and she's She's concerned about it. She sweeps her house and, and covers every inch of floor and every piece of furniture in the house until she finds it. And, and when she finds it, she's so happy. She posts her joy um, to her friends, uh, her neighbors. She calls her neighbors and tells her neighbors um, what, what's happened. It's kind of like, you know, you know, telling some good news on Facebook or phoning or texting the people that are closest to you as your friends to let them know of the good news that you found your hundred dollar gold coin. Um, well, the parallel of this is that when a soul that belongs to God is lost and is floundering, God just doesn't shrug it off and say, uh, oh, well, I've got nine others still with me and no big deal and just leave it alone. Um, no, a, a soul is of great value to the Lord. In, in a sense, the lost belong to God where they, they know it or not, and, he, and he's greatly concerned for the state of their lostness. The piece of silver, you see, is lost, but it's still claimed. It's, um, you know, observe the, the woman in the parable calls the, the money my lost coin. You know, when she lost its possession, she didn't lose her right to it. And didn't, it didn't become someone else's when it slipped out of her hand and, and fell to the floor. Now, when we, as human beings, make bad decisions and rebel against God and wander away from Him, we lose our way and slip away. But this does not go unnoticed by God. 
The Lord longs to see us as people return to the closeness and relationship with him in the palm of his hand, as per se. In the truest sense, the scriptures tell us that we as the body of Christ are, you know, like in the same mindedness of Jesus. We're to be like him in the way that we view other people. And our concerns need to be the same concerns that God has. And when someone that we see or someone that we're connected with who has lost, who has lost their way and uh, has drifted away, um, it's the Lord's will that we have the same attitude as this woman, as the same attitude he has towards people, including us. People that are drifted away from God and are lost are, are precious to him. They're precious to him. And um, they ought to be precious to us. And, and many of us, you know, we get wounded because people push away from the gospel or they they push away from us in angry outrage they 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 hurt us and in our humanness we don't want we don't want the pain of of being rejected and if we've been rejected once or we've been burned once we're twice cautious you know and and when it comes to hurting souls they end up hurting others and, and including us when we reach out to them and they spurn us or they push away from the table or they tell us to get lost or, you know, they persecute us because of our stand or their anger comes out in different ways. And, they, you know, naturally speaking, we don't want anything to do with that. And I admit, you know, like as a pastor, when people hurt me, you know, I, I'm, I'm hurt, I'm human. And I don't want to be hurt again. I, I don't want to go necessarily naturally searching for the lost that have pushed away because they've hurt. What they've said or they've done has hurt me deeply. And I, naturally, I, I, I don't long for that feeling again to be spurned or despised or hurt or ill-spoken of me. I'm sure maybe you can identify the same as I do as being a human. We're like that, but this parable talks about the woman who lost the coin, not concerning herself with how she feels, except for the fact that she feels a sense of loss. And she goes out of her way to search for that coin until it is found. This is the attitude of Christ towards us when we spurned him, when we hurt him, when we rejected him, when we were living for ourselves and we were lost. He didn't consider feelings of reluctance that we might reject him or that we might push away from the table. And there's this, you know, thought that, you know, we don't waste our time with people that are lost because we're just throwing our pearls to the swine. And, and, and we take that, that saying so much out of context. But God loves the lost. He longs to see them in the palm of his hand. And we ought to see the lost the same way as he does. God forgive us for allowing our emotions and our own feelings of entitlement and, and um, comfort and the uncomfortableness of the possibility that we might be rejected from keeping us from pursuing those that just need to be in the palm of God's hand. You know, one of the first things that should cause us to stop and pay attention to this parable is the worth of single souls. They're of great worth to God. I mean, I was watching the third episode of season two of The Chosen and... Um, you know, the disciples were so concerned about their own comfort. They're so human, just like us, you know, bickering around the campfire about who's right and who's wrong and which, is, which way we should go and how we should think about this and that and the other thing. Meanwhile, Jesus is out making his business healing and at great personal cost, 
seeking and saving that which is lost? Do we love the lost? Or are we so concerned about the little things that cause us to bicker and fight when the world is, is going to hell in a handbasket without them? And do we want to be like Jesus? If we want to be like Jesus, we got to go out and get our hands bloody and dirty. And we have to go out and, and get involved in the mess that's out there at personal cost. You see, because in the end, it doesn't matter what happens here in the earth so much as it matters what happens in the kingdom of heaven. All our riches, all of our glory here on the earth is going to fade. You can't take your car with you. You can't take your camper with you. You can't take your trips to the Caribbean or your fishing trips or hunting trips or whatever with you. You can't take that with you. The only thing that's going to go with you is the, the ones that are lost that come along beside you. Because one day God's going to wipe all our tears away and all of this stuff in the world, the good and the bad, you know, there's some good things in the world and the bad. That's all going to be taken away and all things will be made new. Do we look at our world around us through that lens? The master does. And he longs for us to have the same attitude as him. So can we just lay aside all the stuff that doesn't matter? And, and love God and love others and pour ourselves out somehow to seek and save that which is lost. Oh, church, our energies need to be focused on this task and nothing else. To be a servant of God is to be a follower of Jesus and to allow the Holy Spirit to give us the mind of Christ instead of the mind of the flesh, which is all concerned about the, the little things, the bickering things that we bicker about, that we complain about. Our own comfort is so important to us. God forgive us. You know, we never like to look at ourselves as the Laodicean church, but the more that I'm seeing it in this day and age, the more I see the impoverished, the impoverished, Ishment of our being in this culture, spiritually impoverished. Buy in to the gold that God has. <laughs> God's calling us to it. Realize our wretched state and repent. Turn away from the stuff that doesn't matter and turn to Jesus and seek that which is of true value to him. This is food for thought. I hope you guys ponder this and that it stirs you to seek him, to pray, to seek his word, to mine his word, and to allow his Holy Spirit to change you. That's what I pray for me. God bless.